Hello and welcome to this Adobe Photoshop tutorial covering some basics of transformation such as rotate, scale, move, crop and straighten, reflect, and some distortion techniques. So I have a couple images here. So this one's a little bit better composition, whereas this one's crooked and poor composition. And this one's even on its side. Let's open this one first by dragging and dropping. And to rotate this image, we need to go to image, image rotation, and we want to rotate 90 degrees clockwise or to the right. Now I can fit to screen with command zero and we have a lot of excess space. This is a very vertical image and it's also very crooked. So let's grab the crop tool, C for shortcut. And up here, make sure that delete cropped pixels is unchecked as we crop the image in case we should need to recompose. And you can see in the cropping active rectangle, when you hover over a corner, you can see a curved double-sided arrow. This will allow us to click, hold, and drag the image to rotate it. And you can see it's giving us some grid marks which help us to align. So what I'm looking at is the corner of these walls and making sure that's straight. So that's looking pretty good for a rough crop. You can hit enter on the keyboard or this check mark. And let's zoom in on the image with either the zoom tool or command or control plus and minus, or if you have a scroll wheel. So if we go back to our move arrow, since we cropped without deleting the pixels, we can move this image anywhere. You can see this checker pattern would be a transparent part of the image, which we don't want in this case. So I'm going to zoom out and let's do a transform command T or edit free transform. And holding down Option and Shift, I can click on a corner and scale from the center. Or if you just hold down Shift and click and drag a corner, you can scale from the opposite anchor point. So if we're starting to like this composition better and decide we don't need the rest of that image, you can right click on this layer, convert to Smart Object, and now we can double click on that Smart Object layer, which will open it in a new tab. And here, we can use the crop tool again to get rid of some of that excess to optimize our file. So hit enter. And when we save that, it did slightly update the layer on this file. So if you were scaling this image up or down drastically, it's going to really change the composition. So now we can continue moving with our move tool and adjusting this image. I'm using the rule of thirds to visibly put this wall at one third and look at my other thirds. If we want to be even more accurate, we could add grid lines to this by going to View, Guides, and let's do New Guide Layout. And in this dialog box, we can specify how many rows and columns we'd like. So let's say we do Rule of Thirds. I'm going to do three columns, no gutter, and three rows is also fine. So now I can transform again, Command-T, and scale this even more to achieve that Rule of Thirds. If we don't want to see the guidelines as we're working, we can toggle those by going to command semicolon. We're going to view, show, and here's guides, command semicolon. So that's looking much better. There is a little bit of a gap there that's catching my eye. But now we have more of a center of attention here. And you can go ahead and save the file as you'd like. Another transformation we can quickly make is to reflect the image. To do that, we can go to edit and either transform, flip horizontal, or flip vertical. You can also access rotation here and some other transformations we'll look at in a bit. Let's go ahead and Command T, and now we can right click and flip horizontally, or we could flip vertically, and we can rotate this 180, so we're about back to where we were. Whether you're in crop or just in transform, if you hover over this corner and see the curved double-sided arrow again, we have the ability to freely rotate this. Or if you look up here as I'm rotating, you'll see the specific degree of that rotation. You'll also see it in the free transformation that we can adjust the width and height. For some reason, it likes to natively begin in a percentage. If we're going to define a specific width, you want to make sure your link icon is on so that it scales proportionately. And you can right-click on width and change the units of measure. So for us, inches might be more relevant. And you'll notice it only changed that width unit. So we'd also have to change and right click the height and change it to inches. So this image is quite large. Some other transformations we could also do would be with free transform, Command T. 
we can right click or go to the edit transform menu and let's do skew. We can click on one of the edge anchor points and move the up or down or you can click on a corner and you can see how we can really skew this image. If we hit enter to apply that, then we're able to undo command Z. We get into transform again, command T. We can also change perspective. And now you'll see as I grab a corner, it's also mirroring that warp with the opposite anchor point, which is changing the perspective. So again, you can apply the transformation if you're not happy with that and you can undo command Z. Let's try another transformation by right clicking. And this time let's do distort, which is basically the same thing as skew, but a little bit more flexibility. As you saw, we can change the scale in free transform. And if we right click, we can also go to warp, which will allow us to apply a variety of different warping effects. So up here at the top, you'll see warp and you can click and there are all sorts of presets and you can change the bend or enter a custom value. You can easily swap between these different warping transformations. I'm gonna go ahead and enter to apply that effect and then undo. Let's go back into free transform. And you can also apply a warp with this little icon up here and that will get you into the warp menu. You can add additional lines to this grid if you wanna fine tune even more. I want you to note that when we are free transforming, since we have the rest of this image in the actual smart object, let's say we wanna skew based on only this visible area. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the transform, do a select all, which is either command A or go to select all. And on this layer, let's click the mask icon, which is a rectangle with a cutout circle. And now that we have a mask, let's right click on the layer and convert to smart object. Now, when we do a transform, edit transform, now we can easily transform just this visible area. If we needed to alter the previous smart object, we could just click into this layer, which will open this smart object. However, our original is still in another layer deeper within this smart object. So smart objects are really helpful in being able to save the original and continue applying, whether it's effects or transformations, until you're ready to flatten and apply those. Well, let's say I undo to before I did that last transformation, and let's say we wanted to flatten this so we no longer have the original linked image to it. To flatten the image, we can just right click on the layer and go to rasterize layer. So now we have no way to get back to the full sized image. You'll see if we use the move tool that the rest of that image is gone and any other transformations for here will just be on this rasterized image in whatever quality based on the original size and resolution. I hope this video helps you better understand some of the basic transformations within Photoshop.